since I'm out here, I wanted to show you guys how I get my worms. It's really easy. We used to run a worm picking business when I was a kid, two bucks a dozen. By the end of the summer, we had stacks of $2 bills back when Canada used to have $2 bills. Here's another one right there. I don't know if you can see that one. Right here. Oh, I went the wrong way, so he went in. Oh look, that's something really special. That's a breeding pair. They're gonna separate, they're not gonna like the camera. They're not gonna like me prodding around. But there's actually two connected together. Oh, they just separated. His hole's over here, so we'll plug up his hole. He can't get out. And we'll flip him over. And then we'll grab him. There we go, he wants to hold on too, and then he's gonna tire out. And once he gets out of his hole, he's doomed. He can't go anywhere. And he doesn't even know where his hole is, even if we tried to put him back in the hole. There's another one. Look how big these worms are. Four bucks a dozen you pay for these guys now. Yeah, I'll take these with us. Oh, we just missed one. That guy went in. He didn't want to play. I did find another mating pair. They're hermaphroditic. So they don't really need to find anybody special. Just a different one. That mating pair was somewhere in here. I want to see if I can show you a worm proper. Oh, there they are. These guys are in love. Without disturbing them. Let's see. You guys see them paired up? So they've lined each other up. Left side and right side. And what they're doing right now is they're sharing sperm so that they can fertilize their own eggs. You guys see that? So there's a worm over here on this side. And it's all connected over here to the other side. And they're so in love that they don't even know that they're in the Oh, I scared them. No, they're going to separate. Oh, bye-bye. Oh, I hope they fertilized each other. Can you see the glistening of the worm? Sometimes it's hard to see in the grass, but he's right here. Here, we got him. And we got to grab him and definitely pull him out. There we go. There's another worm. Look at that pile, that's all worms. See how far out of his hole his, he is? He's way out, he's right there. Now he can't go in because I plugged up his hole. I'm gonna flip my finger around and we're gonna grab him. Here we go. You guys see that guy? He's right there. Got him. Oh no, that one broke. Once they break, they're pretty much dead. That'll be bird food. Let's get the other guy we left back. See if you can find another one. I want to try to find one that's in kind of plain view for you guys so you can see really what I'm talking about. There's one there. Can you guys see that one? Right there. He's go all the way back over here. There, now we got two. And we can just keep doing this. Four bucks a dozen, guys. Four bucks a dozen. Here's a good example of one. This guy's in the driveway. So he's hanging out out of his hole there. And you can see how sensitive he is. He doesn't like the vibration. There he goes, back in his hole. So all you have to do is grab them before they go back in their hole. That guy's going to go back in his hole. Those guys are going to go back in his hole. Oh, here's one here, right here by the bird feeder. You guys see that one? So all you got to do is plug up that hole back there. Now you got him. I'll try to do this with one hand. There we go. So that's it. Once it comes out, you got them. You got yourself one twelfth of four dollars. How much money is that? One twelfth of four dollars. How much is each worm worth? You guys can figure that out. How much are you saving? And how many worms do you think are in that pail? Alright guys, I got my full cool whip container. Tomorrow I'm going to zip out to the fish pond and we're gonna see how many worms we have and we're gonna feed every single one of these worms to Clark Kent and all of his friends. You guys interested in seeing that? I am. I'm gonna train these fish to eat real food, not just fish food. See you over at the pond.
They're little, little, little itty bitty tadpoles right now. These, I think, are spring peepers. They're gonna take about seven weeks to become fully grown. Put these back in the water. And then they're gonna move from being a tadpole in this pond to being a forest frog. And then they're gonna make a pile of noise. If you guys ever heard spring peepers, they make a pretty distinct sound. As these tadpoles mature, they're gonna get picked off more and more by the trout that are in the pond here, which is a good thing. And the tadpoles right now, they're feeding on this algae. It might look unsightly, but this is exactly what the tadpoles are gonna be eating for now, until they get bigger. Then they're gonna turn omnivorous, and they're gonna eat whatever they can find, whatever's small enough to fit in their mouth. Right now, they're just gonna be in here grazing on all this algae. So this is exactly what we want. Oh man, Clark just went up to the shallows. Trying to catch up to him here. I don't know how solid it is back here, but he went in real shallow. I want you guys to get a look at him. I can see him. He went right in the super shallow water here. Oh, where'd he go? That's the big guy. That's Clark Spence. He's just cruising the shallows. Tried to throw a worm to him, but he wouldn't take it. Found him again here. Here he is. Right at the far side there. I try to toss the worm to him. See if he'll take it. You guys see him? Cruising right there, that dark shadow. Throw it in front of him. There we go, that's perfect. Oh man, he's not even looking at it. Clark! That's food, dude! Now that I've named that fish, I really feel like I need to take care of him. Oh well. He'll figure it out. He's a big boy. All right, kids, you guys listening? I've got our cool, cool whip container. Bet you're curious to know how many we collected. So am I. We collected 199 worms. 199 worms. That's six and a half dozen. The value on that, 66 bucks. Do you know how long it took me? A half an hour. I made $132 an hour. This was my summer job, if you can believe it, collecting dew worms. I did it as an entrepreneur, as a young entrepreneur, 132 bucks an hour collecting worms. If you guys are fishermen, it's not hard to pick these. Wait for a rain, go out after dark, shine your light, find the worm, pick them. I showed you how to do it. All you gotta do is do it. Let's feed these to the fish. We're gonna inject this with some air. We'll throw them out. And instead of sinking, they'll stay up at the top and the fish will hopefully pick them off. That's the idea. We're trying to train these fish off fish food and not to natural foods. So our idea was to set up a feeding station at the back edge of the pond here because the kids don't swim at this end of the pond. So we kind of have run of it. We have to train them. So they're not used to being fed in this pond or in a big space at all because they've lived so long at Linden Fish Hatchery. Linden Fish Pond, you guys remember those guys? Keep those guys in mind. Go fish at their pond. Like any other animal, that food is available for them here. Let's get this worm rig set up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's pretty cool. It's gonna inflate the worm and you don't wanna inflate it too much because <laughs> then it has lots of holes in it and it wants to deflate. So just under the skin, fill it up. Now that worm, if I've done it correctly, should float. I'm gonna huck it out there and the trout should be able to see this really good. But when you're fishing like this, uh, sometimes they'll float it up 15 feet off the bottom in a really deep lake, so it's suspended. And if the fish are swimming by, they tend to look up for insects and bugs. They see a worm, they come up and smash it. Something on the bottom, they have to angle funnily downward and they don't tend to, they don't like to do that. They just, it's just a weird thing for a fish. They wanna angle up. Let's huck this out in the water and let's see what happens. I'm hoping something comes up and smokes it. Before we throw it out there, let's make sure it floats. Yep, she floats, but she's not a boat. So the next obvious question is whether I can throw this out far enough. Let's see, <laughs> I'm hurting myself. Oh, oh, two looked at it and they went back down. <laughs> Man, they're looking at it though. All right guys, let's try one over on this other side here. Mark said he was feeding them over on this side.
Uh, nothing. Can't believe that. Let's try sinking one. They're looking at it, but they're not taking it. They're looking at it. Oh, we got one. They took it. I can't show you though. It's below the surface. Clark Spent is over in the shallows and he's just cruising right along the edge of the shore where the water is probably a foot and a half, two foot deep. And he's just pigging out on all the tadpoles. It's interesting the, the uh, structures are setting up. There's two groups. There's a group of trout here. There's a group of trout at the other end. And then there's the Lone Star Clark Spent cruising the shallows, but different strategies, right? These, these guys here are still looking for the feed. Uh, Clark Spence already taken off on that. And then we got uh, a couple over here working on the worms, but only the big guys, the, uh, the little guys weren't touching it. I threw it out and the uh, big guys are attacking now, but we're gonna get them keyed in on the worms here. Here's another two. They go away from it initially, and then they start looking at it. Oh yes, no, he took it, dropped it, took it. Oh, they're, it's like it's, they're dropping it because it's too big. We're getting there though, we're making some progress. We're training these fish to eat natural foods. Oh, oh, it took it. Yes, it took it. <laughs> Finally. That was a big one. Let's try these guys here. Ah, these guys are all over it. They've got it nailed. Now we'll throw some worms in there too. They're so keyed in on that little pellet form that they completely ignore the worms. It's gonna be an uphill battle to train them, but we're gonna get there. Just keep tossing worms in. <laughs> There's a big mess of fish there anyway. <laughs> Wondering what's going on. Oh, the big guy's coming. He's gonna smash them. Look at that guy right there. Oh, he didn't try to wait. They got it. One guy got it. Well, I'm not sure how much progress we made there. Uh, a couple of fish ate worms. That's better than no fish eating worms. I think we, now we gotta let them get hungry a little bit. Probably won't feed them tomorrow. Come back out, I, got, I saved half the worms at 199. So I got about 100 left. I think we'll save those for another day to get them on to the feed. But we're doing a little bit by little bit to get these guys turned over. So we're gonna be monitoring the water temperatures of the pond. So I got myself a little fish pond thermometer here. That's funny, right? And uh, right now, it's reading 18, well, 18 degrees Celsius. So that's the surface water temperature because it's only in six inches of water. So the key temperatures are eight, uh, 24 at the surface. So if it 20 gets higher than 24 at the surface, this pond's done. So that's really what we're looking at. And we're talking with the owners as well as if we're gonna do a pond expansion at the end of this. And it seems to be like everybody's on the same page. So that, that might happen. We might get 300 fish here next year. All right, guys, we're going to jump in the kayak here without wiping out. I've got the uh, thermometer on my fishing rod, so I should be able to drop it down. I don't know how stable this canoe is. This is Mark's. There's some fish food in there. All right, let's try not to wipe out here. There's also an anchor in here. All right, let's drop her down here. See if we can get a water temperature measure with that thermometer. We're looking for as cold as we can possibly get. Colder is better. Ideally it would be like five degrees Celsius, but it's not gonna happen in this pond. Kind of feel like I'm fishing a little bit, but of course I'm not at all. All right, let's check, see what we got. It's been down there for a little bit. We got uh, 17 it says still. Doesn't really make sense, but hey, that's what it's telling me. In the shallows, it was 18, so I don't know how it could be 17 only there, but there is definitely a deep hole there for sure. You guys are just gonna pull the anchor up here and then we'll go for a little spin. Let's see what this pond's all about here. All right, we're out. Let's see if I can paddle a kayak. Might as well go with the wind to start with, right? <laughs> we'll make it easier. And then of course we gotta get back, so that's gonna be harder. You guys wanna go backwards the whole way? <laughs> well, Mark did measure that it was uh, 12 degrees Celsius in the pond here, but 
I measured 17 in that hole where it seems like most of the trout are hanging out. There's a couple other big deep holes here though. A lot of algae, even on the bottom here. Well, might get this thing back to shore here. Maybe we'll go try to pick up a couple bass. We're going to be targeting those bass from now on. Any chance we get. They're going to spawn in another month. So I'm guessing they're going to be a little bit easier to target at that time. There we go. Clark Spence right there. <laughs> He's a giant 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 fish man i can't fish here i risk catching him i wonder if he'll take a worm if anybody will take a worm it's clark spent here let's see if he'll take it you guys ready watching oh that's right next to him that's right in his wheelhouse come on clark oh he's not even budging Dude, he's just chilling. Try another one here. He got a right in his wheelhouse here. Oh, he's going for it. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. Oh, can you guys see him there? He totally went in for it. He is sitting right there. What a lunker, man. He is huge. Oh, man. He's just cruising the shallows here. A little concerned about the temperature, I gotta be honest, 17 in that spot there. And I couldn't find the 12 that Mark was saying, but hey, we're gonna have to live with it or the fish are gonna die with it. So keep. Stay tuned, we're gonna keep following this pond all the way through, right to the end, and it looks like we're gonna expand it. So stick around. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you uh, wanna support the channel, go check out Linden Trout Hatchery, give them some business, go catch a fish, buy a fish, or buy a bunch of fish for your pond. They are the people to talk to. Let Clark know, if you do go, that I sent you there, because that'll help me with this pond series.